first is challenging. <laughs> I like challenges, so it's very interesting to see every time like new tasks that uh, you try to do <laughs> to succeed. The other one is community, uh, of course. That's why SSC is so popular. And uh, the last one, I think it's welcoming from everyone, not only students, but professors and faculty and yeah. Uh, so for me, it would be the people, well, uh, the, the community as well. Uh, it would be, I guess, the quality of studies and all the opportunities that you have afterwards. I was here before, so for me it wasn't the first impression, <laughs> uh, because I was here for a lot of dancing competitions before with my family. Maybe first impression was it is quite small comparing to my city. Uh, and uh, I think it's beneficial in some way because you can just walk around everywhere. You don't need to take subway for one hour to go to the center of the city. Well, I actually also was here a few years before coming to SSC actually. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, the city itself, the old town. And I remember specifically that we were also walking on this like Albert, Astrelny, Eku streets. And I remember that it was raining. So this was a complete uh, thing for me that it's cold, way colder than, uh, than in Moldova. It was raining and I remember that I actually stopped and I took a picture of SSC without even knowing. And that was a very, very fun uh, thing to find out afterwards when I applied. For me, it would be uh, the people, but outside of SSC, let's say, uh, the people in the city that you meet, that you got to talk to, because since not knowing Latvian is kind of a disadvantage for you being here, but you can figure it out. The most important thing is to start speaking in English, uh, not, uh, not in, in Russian to, to the people. Uh, but also, it's still, for me, it's still the fact that it is way colder than in Moldova. For me, actually, it's otherwise because it's way warmer here <laughs> and in St. Petersburg and it is very sunny comparing to my city. I really like the weather here. Um, I would say what I found out that I, there is a lot of nature here that uh, kind of like I wasn't saying in Russia that often like lakes and canyons and so on. I actually easily talk in Russian everywhere, <laughs> except with uh, like the family of my boyfriend and so on, because they speak English. Uh, but yeah, I can say that it's very easy to communicate in Russian everywhere, mostly in the center, in the old town, maybe in other districts uh, of Latvia, it can be harder, but then you can use English. I guess for me, it's the other way around with like my boyfriend's family, I speak in Russian. And uh, I got uh, this lesson that better speak in English when you're outside, when you are looking for a direction or in the shop, because otherwise I had a uh, bad experience of uh, getting uh, these looks that uh, uh, people just assume that I'm Latvian and they don't uh, want to, to speak it, but I'm speaking only Russian. So they, they easily switch to Russian, so that's a plus for me. As I said, I really like it is that it is very small, but uh, it is very full of experience you can find, meaning the architecture, like uh, nature, as I said, um, that's what I like. And it is a disadvantage for me too, because sometimes I can't find clothes, what it was very easy for me to find in Russia, like in the, I don't know, 10 minute <laughs> distance from me. So some of the things are not available because it's not Megapolis, of course. <laughs> And I kind of miss Subway a bit because it was very calming to sit there in the morning and read a book, but I'm <laughs> I get used to walking. <laughs> I don't know, like leisure activities, some of them are not available. And maybe even the coffee like shops, there. there's a lot of them in the center and in the old town. But when you go out a bit further, uh, they're just like very far from each other and you can't find like the normal caffeine calls there. The fact that it's a very cozy uh, city, it's a city that you would uh, most likely like to retire in. And um, a disadvantage would be, as Christina said, uh, the lack of some events, especially events that are welcoming uh, international people, because some of them seem very fun, but uh, you have to know Latvian to, to understand and to entertain yourself there. It depends on the exchange rate uh, of euro to rubble. Uh, so, like, I mean, maybe 
five years or ten years ago it was quite cheap because the exchange rate was very low but now the it became very very high so maybe comparing to rubble of course it is way more expensive but what i can say comparing to other european cities and countries it is way cheaper <laughs> uh, in terms of living costs uh, maybe groceries not that much they are like around the same um, According to my monthly costs, like before I was living in an apartment close to uh, SSE Riga on Antonis, and it was uh, 600 uh, euros a month, uh, plus around, I don't know, maybe three to 400 on other stuff like dancing, nails, <laughs> uh, like food, um, driving lessons and so on. So for now, it will be around 400, maybe maximum 500 if I go somewhere on weekends. So in my case, it is definitely way more than I would have paid in Moldova. Uh, but compared to like some of like the big uh, countries in uh, Europe specifically, it is way cheaper. You can get an apartment even cheaper than you could get a dorm room in uh, some of like the biggest uh, countries in Europe. This is definitely a plus that in the developed Europe, it's one of the cheapest. Uh, but still, it's uh, twice, I guess, at least as more as I would have spent at home. This is because of our uh, average wages. It's because of also the the exchange rate. But it's uh, it's uh, it's okay. It's also I guess up to 400 could be per month. So uh, this would be the average that you have spent. Of course, if you wanna shop every month and do something extra, then you have to to pay more. I like one Malta uh, first because. Uh, uh, the friend of my boyfriend who works there, so I mostly get free coffee there. <laughs> and I just like the atmosphere there, it's very cozy. Uh, then I actually like Latte B. It works on let's say like five or something. It's like breakfast lunch place, but I know that Morton likes it a lot. <laughs> I saw him a couple of times there and it was close to my place. Yeah, I think that's two of my top places that I would go if I have free time between lectures or yeah, seminars. From the coffee places, I have heard a lot before, actually, but it was a new discovery for me. It's a rocket bin. It's not far away from school. It's like five minutes away, I guess. Uh, of course, the most uh, well-known cafe. Uh, we all know that we all uh, go, go there sometimes. Uh, but in terms of eating, well, it depends because it oscillates a lot. I'm very picky in terms of food. So for me, it's different places every time, but here near school, it's a place called Burga, where I really like, especially lately, the Salyanka soup there. A Latvian food is actually very close to Russian. The cold beet soup is the variation of borscht <laughs> for me, so uh, it was a bit specific because I, for me, cold soups is not normal, like you eat soup hot, <laughs> but I really like it. But the, like, the food itself, the culture is very close to what I eat at home, so... It's nothing very, very different. <laughs> uh, for me, it's definitely different from what I uh, eat at home and uh, what we usually eat, like our traditional food. Uh, I also have tried this uh, cold beet soup. It was, uh, it's okay, <laughs> not really a fan. <laughs> it was okay eating it once. Not, I don't think that I'm gonna be ever again like, yes, I wanna get it. I have tried uh, some of the desserts, the purely traditional Latvian desserts. And I still haven't uh, tried it, but um, I guess you have like this type of uh, cottages with like fish and uh, with some type of fish. This sounds very, very weird to me and I'm still not open to, but I guess maybe <laughs> soon I will try it. I use the public transport mostly because I'm still learning for the driving license. <laughs> um, when I will get it, I definitely will use the car. Uh, but I can say it's reachable with the student discount, but the problem is they... It's still not that reachable with the student discount. I would say it's quite expensive comparing to what I pay for public transport in Russia. You always forget about the student discount. Like, for example, I already... I, I went to buy it and I see like 10 euros for 10 tickets. <laughs> and I was shocked and I was like, oh, your student discount is out. And I don't understand why they don't send emails that your student discount is not working anymore, like the Riga Satix may. <laughs> so you need to remember that you need to go there. Um, yeah, and I can say that, I mean, buses are not that often going from the place I live, and sometimes it, you need to wait for 15 minutes. So still it's not that, like, 
uh, it's not that good as it was at home when I just go to meet to Saba and it's like in two minutes it's there. <laughs> but I definitely would use the car if I would have an opportunity because uh, I think it's way more convenient. For me, it would be either public transport or uh, by car. Uh, but uh, I'd say I'm not the one who's driving, so I, I wouldn't know like all the costs uh, to say precisely. For all the tra transport besides like one type of uh, minibuses, I guess it would be 17 euros or something like that. But if it's late at night and you're out in town or something, well, well, of course you get a tax or something and the fares are extremely okay. Well, in the last time they're like, are more, way more expensive, but it's okay. I mean, bicycles are okay, but the weather is not really like what you want with the bicycle. <laughs> um, the same with scooters and everything like that, uh, because I think once I went on a scooter and I was ill for two weeks after because it was so windy, it wasn't even cold. And if the rain starts, the bicycle is out, like, and sometimes like we girls go in heels and skirts and how are you gonna use the bicycle? Like that you like really need like with the motorcycle to adjust your like clothes and what you wear to on what you go. I personally live in Yukla and uh, so the audience would understand the other side of, uh, of the city. So it wouldn't be even possible for me, I guess, to get my bike. And the roads, I would say that like, oh, yeah. those like big uh, uh, bulks of <laughs> stone, they are not really that comfortable to drive by bicycle or scooter or anything you take aside from the car um, or like the public bus. I mean, even if sometimes I walk on heels, I, it's like a, a challenge to me to <laughs> come here without breaking my leg. <laughs> That's one more thing I, uh, I understood here because in Russia, there's always like everywhere asphalt or like very like flat stone. It's not like those big bulks of stone that you try to not put your heel in between of them. I have traveled actually a lot outside of Riga, more in the western part of Latvia. So I still haven't got to like those parts of Rezek, you know, like Pils and all that is still uh, unknown for me. But I really enjoyed uh, the seaside and uh, all the other um, cities uh, and um, more like towns in, uh, in Latvia, seeing uh, the widest waterfall as well and I have especially developed love for like the mini zoos, the mini farms here in Latvia because in from I'm coming from Moldova but since I don't have any uh, grandparents in the village this was completely new to me so I was like allowed to pet uh, some horses or to, to feed them so this was an extremely good experience. I think the sea, <laughs> like that's what I would suggest to go, like maybe you will not be able to go to the other part of Latvia to, see, to like see the seaside, but Jurmola is always available, quite close, and the dunes and like all of that, like nature close to their like seaside and the beach, that's very nice. <laughs> can be very windy, but <laughs> it's still like very nice place to see. I guess um, I advise someone to visit the Camry Park, in, especially in the early, early morning as well as there is also in some sort of forest, there's not an adventure park, but something where you have to go barefoot and you have to go on different type of woods and different type of like soil. So this was uh, a very interesting experience for me as well. So if you want to get everything from Latvia, like the forest and all of this uh, experience, then it would be like going to that part to Camry and then to, to Jurmala because they're all in the same way. I feel very safe here comparing to my to Russia. I mean, Russia is very popular with being not safe, <laughs> especially at nights and in the evenings. Like here, I can easily walk like very, very late in the evening without like being scared of that something will happen, someone will rob me or something like that. Because in Russia, it was like uh, after 10, I wasn't walking alone outside, <laughs> especially in the age of being very young woman. <laughs> I wasn't walking alone. So I can say it's very safe, uh, especially in the like new center, old town, maybe a bit outside. Maybe I will not go on, in the Maskechka reg region <laughs> like alone, uh, but still like here, it's very safe. Like. I am coming actually from a medium sized town in, uh, in Moldova. So I was way safer home because everyone knows everyone and uh, still it's like 40,000 people, but still either they know my parents or they know myself personally. So I was more safe at home, I guess here, if it's dark, then I uh, I do not want to, to go alone. So if I'm with someone, it's uh, way better. But I guess 
it's uh, still like in the daylight as well because well we are girls and uh, sometimes uh, we do get approached by, by men i did in yeah. in broad daylight in the city center and uh, i was just like uh, thinking i was just saying that no i don't know latvian when i literally understood everything because we were speaking in russian so i just made a fool of myself so they would uh, go but i don't know about the, the other uh, cities i didn't stay at night in much of them i guess only in one but i wasn't alone so uh, i wouldn't dare to go out uh, in during the night in other cities without having someone who knows it or something because there are different cities that they people don't know russian maybe they do not want to don't know english as well so it's rather way more complicated than, than here in riga i think it depends on with whom you're talking but they're rather open i can say they're closed uh, i was walking once and like just uh, like with my new red hair or even colored hair and just uh, random people on the street were saying that it looks very nice can i touch it is it a wig <laughs> i mean it was very nice because uh, no yeah in in russia maybe they are open to like some of them not all i think it's quite the same i can say they are very closed <laughs> Yeah, I guess it depends on the type of people that you speak to. If it's some cashier shop, maybe not really because they're, well, you can understand they're quite busy. They're maybe like uh, tired already, so they don't want any interaction. But if you go in uh, the old town, let's say on a Friday night, then everyone is open. So it depends in which circumstances you talk to these people. Yeah, like fair markets are very open, like grandma's sitting there, they can talk in Russian with you about everything while you're trying to find something. The taxi drivers are very talkative, <laughs> yes. especially when they see a completely different name, like not, not Latvian. For me, as I'm not a European resident, uh, it is very beneficial to stay here for two more years to get the residence permit, because I can't even work here for more than 20 hours now a week. And it's quite hard to find a job with a normal salary uh, if I can work only 20 hours legally. Um, and I don't really have that much rights comparing to other residents from European Union or Latvia. And then maybe find the MBA program somewhere in Europe. That, or not MBA, like a master's degree program. I'm considering business law, uh, particularly. Maybe actually even changing my profession at all and going to the vet school. I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, I'm quite, I'm quite now lost. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but probably like stay two more years. Maybe find a job that will take me for 20 hours a week. I'm not working, but still it's not as good as I wanted it to be comparing to other people who have from European Union. And for them it's like one week and they find a job. <laughs> for me it's three months and I still can't find it like the normal with the normal salary. Well, I actually am a European citizen, so for me it's uh, way easier to, to stay here, to remain here. Uh, yes, I do have to be employed, but it's not as uh, this that you have to have the contract on hand uh, when you finish your study, so you would be able to, to stay in Latvia more. Uh, I do plan to stay here in Latvia, I'm not sure for how many years afterwards, I guess it depends. But on further studies, I uh, haven't uh, decided yet because I want to take a break after the studies here. Uh, but take a break in terms of trying myself in different, uh, in different places uh, because I'm still not sure what I want to do next. So we have tried here everything, but I have to try it in practice. So I would be sure that this is exactly what I like. So I won't go to a master's and be like, well, actually, I don't like working in this uh, area. Friends who are from European Union, they are very open because uh, they still can work like full time. But for me, like this year and last year, it was very hard to find a job because, for example, if they see two candidates, me, the year three, uh, that can work 20 hours a week and the Latvian like student even from other universities who can have less experience and studying experience they still will take him because for them it's more beneficial to have a person who can work full-time than part-time and giving the same salary. For me it's different yes I did struggle with finding a job I guess uh, after the end of the second year because a lot of places that I have applied to it was a lot of different directions so it depends because people are looking for some specific expertise already and you don't have all this working experience. So it's uh, kind of different and uh, a bit difficult because still entry position sometimes requires some experience. Uh, but I did get a few offers. I did get uh, some good jobs over the, the last two years. 
I worked in companies uh, where either some people were SSC graduates or they have worked at SSC. So everything revolves actually around the community of SSC Riga people, either workers or, uh, or uh, graduates and something like that. So it is easier to get a job in places that you know for sure that some SSC Riga graduates worked at uh, or you know someone personally and you can talk to, to them. I use Russian because it's the like the co-founder of the co uh, real estate agency is the Belarusian uh, person who was studying in SSE. Um, so yeah, everyone there, the brokers, everyone speak Russian, but I still use English like at work in the tasks uh, sometimes. I mean, from my side, the advice would be even if you don't like dormitories, maybe it's a nice way of building a community if you're going alone to the country. Because when I was living uh, alone in the apartment, I kind of was sad that I like, uh, didn't offer anyone to be a neighbor with me because uh, it is very nice to study together, to like walk around and you don't really like to uh, investigate the city alone. So it is quite nice to have a community before you go into SSE, maybe just find people on Facebook who apply to SSE and just uh, make friends with them. So yeah, that's the main advice I have. <laughs> yeah, for fellow people from the southern part of Europe, I would advise them to bring a warm jacket like straight away, even, they, even while they feel like it's summer back at home. Here it's all, all, all already autumn. Uh, but I guess in terms of studies, do not be afraid. And uh, I guess for some of other people, do not be uh, extremely full of themselves. Uh, because it is this that you think at first that, oh, maybe you have learned this in school and you're going to excel it, but you have to actually really work hard for it, even though you have some uh, background uh, from back at home. I have one more advice. If you want to rent a flat, please don't do it one week before going to SSE, because in August the prices are very high um, and uh, like the floods are getting away like one day. So you go to see it and like a couple of hours after it's already like rented. Uh, so my advice is to start early, not only with renting, but with documents too, especially for Russian people or those who are not from European Union, because it's a lot of work need to be done before, a lot of money spent on documents, like especially the first residence permit you get. Um, so try to do it like in the beginning of summer. <laughs> That's my advice. I mean, now it's hard to go from Russia here, so I don't know how it will work. But before, like just go before, see the flats, rent them early or later. First live in the dormitories, then rent later. I guess something else would be like that. Yes, you do some new, you do make some new friends uh, here, but never forget about the people from home. So still be in contact because there are some, some, uh, some times where yes, it hard, it's hard and then you want to feel uh, this uh, familiarity with someone, maybe, maybe not, not from here, maybe someone you would understand, you want to speak in your native language, especially if you have no other students, like we have a few in Moldova, so we also try to get a lot uh, together as, as much as possible.